to Venezuela now, where opposition leader Juan Guaido is laying out his vision for the country. He's giving a speech at a university in Caracas as protests mount against President Nicolas Maduro and calls for him to step down and intensify. Maduro responded to a new wave of rallies by appearing with the military yesterday. So CBS News State Department reporter Christina Ruffini is following the latest from Washington. So, Christina, Special Representative to Venezuela, uh, Elliot Abrams, talked to you as well as some other journalists. What was your biggest takeaway uh, from him? Uh, basically, he said, you know, we're on Team Venezuela. Uh, if there was some sort of an award for best supporting ally at whatever international body wanted to give out trophies, you know, the U.S. wants everyone to know they're in the running for that. Uh, their approach is basically twofold. First, they're giving the new government the political support it needs to get legitimacy internationally, and they're hoping that in turn will help legitimize them back home and make it harder for Nicolas Maduro to stay in power, right? If nobody's going to deal with him or talk to him on the international stage, it makes it much harder to run a country in a globalized world. The second part of this is financial. The U.S. sanctions are huge because the only thing that has kept Maduro in power this long, other than the army and powerful allies like Russia and Cuba, is Venezuelan's oil reserves. Look, Venezuela has the largest oil reserves in the world, actually more than Saudi Arabia, and that's earned a lot of money for Maduro and his allies who've stashed it in hard currency like dollars or euros and gold bars and other financial assets in banks all around the world. So Abrams said the U.S. believes that any asset of the Venezuelan government should be under the control of the Venezuelan people and that the representative of those people is interim president Juan Guaido. So explain to our audience, Christina, what exactly is the U.S. role here? Uh, and there was that moment where some people gleaned some information uh, from John Bolton's notes about troops. I don't know if that's gone anywhere, but what is the U.S. expecting to happen in Venezuela and what can they do to hasten that? So we asked uh, Elliot Abrams uh, about the notepad, and we said, you know, 5,000 troops to Colombia, what does that mean? And he said, I don't know, you'll have to ask Ambassador no uh, Bolton's notepad. Uh, I think the U.S. Uh, the U.S. is really taking a hands-on approach. You know, he said we're we're all in on the diplomatic front. We really want to. They're they're trying to guide this process. And look, the interim government it has momentum behind it, but they're they're new. They're figuring it out as we go along. I mean, they had a press conference yesterday, and there was a flag to put behind the podium for the new ambassador. No one had brought a flagpole, so they ended up, you know, after messing around with it, they ended up borrowing tape from the camera crews and like getting it hooked on the wall. And I think. That's kind of indicative of how this process is going to go. They're figuring it out as they go along, but they're going to need powerful allies like the United States, like the European Union, to help guide that process uh, because they're 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 new. They're you know the kids, new kids on the block. They haven't been in government, and they need help. You mentioned something really interesting about the oil money and Maduro stashing it in other places, like in uh, euro accounts. You know, if there is a new government, that government is going to need money. Do they know where this money is? Would a new government have access to these foreign accounts? No, they actually don't know where it is. It's a, it, I mean, they know where some of it is and they have an idea, but it's a bit like a big money divorce where one person in the couple is, you know, like frantically hiding assets in the deed to the summer home. Uh, both the U.S. and the ambassador uh, to the U.S. have said essentially, like I said, the hunt is on to find that money and property wherever it is. Uh, and that's one of the reasons the U.S. is taking this dual approach, because when a country like Canada or the U.K. recognizes Guaido diplomatically as a legitimate leader, that then potentially freezes up any Venezuelan assets under that country's jurisdiction to be handed over to the new administration. Look, if the money is in Russia or Turkey or places that are still loyal to Maduro, Guaido's not going to get it. Uh, but they think there's enough in those foreign accounts that could potentially help this new government at least get off the ground, and the eventual goal is to convert some of that into humanitarian aid, which is so desperately needed across the country. Hmm. So ultimately, Christina, is there any indication when new elections will be held? That's a really good question. Uh, as you guys know, according to the Constitution, the reason Guaido was able to claim that he could uh, appoint himself president is he could do it for 30 days, right? It's kind of an emergency period. After that, he's supposed to call new elections. Uh, but the ambassador yesterday was asked specifically about this timeline and pretty much said it's not going to happen. He said that elections could not be called in only a few days because all the same conditions on the ground exist that, current, that led up to the corrupt elections the last time. And this, this had two purposes. 
was right. He kind of said, backed away from that 30 days. But he also seemed to be directing it directly to the EU uh, members like France and Germany and Spain who had given Maduro eight days to call new elections. Uh, and then after that, he said, but even after eight days, he doesn't see it happening in 30 days because the country is a mess. And in order to uphold the Constitution and follow the rule of law, there has to be rule of law on the ground. Now, this is an interesting stance to take because Guaido's government is claiming legitimacy based on the Constitution. And now they're saying, OK, well, we're going to set aside this, you know, 30 day thing in the Constitution because we have to fix all the stuff on the ground. So we'll have to see if that's something that they can sell when, you know, they're they're kind of undercutting their own reason for claiming that they can come to power. Mm. All right, Christina Ruffini, always great to have you help us understand these complex international issues. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Have a good day.